What if I told you that you could climb any tree at any height? Would have a lot of possibilities. A lot of people that bow hunt are always looking for new ways to climb a tree. And especially by removing weight. Now this is referred to as the slatter system. And uh, this goes around the tree, the rope. And then it hooks on this metal claw, and then it goes up against the tree. And then you put one foot at a time in the bottom. And then you work your way up. So literally, it's a rope ladder if you think about it. Somewhat difficult to use. There is a a little bit of practice with it. It's not for everybody. A few people with videos on YouTube have shown there it makes them nervous. Now you have to understand you have to use a lineman rope which goes around your waist and around the tree and as you climb it keeps you safe. Now but there's other possibilities for this slatter system. Let's say shit hits the fan and you want to sleep someplace quiet. You want to be out of sight, out of mind. And let's say you're using a hammock system. You could literally use this slatter system and climb that tree up into the treetops where the leaves are, connect your hammock system up and tie yourself in and then go to sleep in the hammock. And if there's anybody down below, if they can't see you, they would walk right under you you not even know. That is if you don't snore. So that is quite interesting. Now, what makes the slatter system so cool is the weight. I mean, it weighs less than two pounds. I mean, that's nothing to throw in your backpack. Now, they have what's called sticks, which are metal poles that you can climb on. The newest one that's out is about a pound to stick, so four pounds to get four of them to get up about 15 or 18 feet. And now you're sitting in your tree stand, you pull it up, hook it up, and now you're ready to hunt. But running sticks is limited unless you run what's referred to as a one stick. And that's where you're climbing up, hanging off your rope, pull, pull the stick up, lift the rope up, and continue to process over and over until you get to the desi desired height. The slatter system, there's no limitation. I can go up 15 feet, I can go up 20 feet, I can go up 40 feet. It's all up to me of what I want to do. Some people will then run a pedal still they stand on and in a saddle system to give them, you know, a little bit more comfort when they're up there. But this is just one part of the deer hunt. Now this takes the major bulk of the of the beating and uh, I did see the one guy using it and it was getting frayed a little bit with this here and he'd only used it three or four times. So I can see myself having to order or make some of these to put on the end and then climb up. The trick is the slatter system is you got to put your toe up against the tree and then you just start climbing up. And you do run a lineman's belt around the tree so that way you're safe. I've even seen some guys not use a lineman's belt which I think is kind of dangerous. But this system basically allows you hook up, climb, pull it up, hook up, climb, pull it up. And within three or four times you're already up, you know, almost 20 feet. So that's pretty impressive especially with the weight now weight's a big key if you're planning on walking a fair distance when you go back into the wilderness I mean especially if you hunt on public land I mean competition's high a lot of people uh, hunt on public land they'll go back for a two-hour walk where most guys won't and then they'll set up and they believe it ups their chances better. 
I got one video when I was in land in between the lakes and I was uh, camping. And I had my camera set up, my big expensive camera. I recorded deer walking through the water up to their bellies. And I was, I never seen anything like that before, but that was actually very smart. You see, a deer likes to get out of the line of sight. Normally, they like to lower their bodies. Like, if there's a little river or, you know, there's a drop in the land, if they can walk down there and the only thing you see is maybe their head, they would prefer to walk in that gully, basically, because out of sight, out of mind. But I've never seen deer walking in the water like that before because at the same time, deer are lazy just like any other animal and they want to go down the trail. <clears throat> but they were walking in the water and it wasn't hunting season too. So they were trying to stay safe. But this ladder system on how it works. Now, it's not cheap. I think it was like 240 250 I can't remember. But, um, and there's no affiliate link. I'll give you a link where I bought it, but it's not an affiliate link or anything. I seen it, and I just wanted to try it because of the weight savings. But it does have um, a lot of options. Now, the only thing I don't like about it since I took it out of the package was it really doesn't, they try, he tries to fold it up and do different things with it, but it doesn't have a quick way of putting it together. If it would have came with a proper pouch, then that would have made sense. But um, it didn't, so I'm going to have to figure something out. So, this is the slaughter system. You know, it's, it's an amazing time right now because of all the inventions coming out for hunting. It's way different than when I was in my 20s. Way different. We didn't have anything like this stuff. And, you know, we, we, we'd grab some trees, cut them down, and nail them into the tree, and then we'd climb the tree and sit on a platform and lay flat and uh, try to get to jump on the deer when they walked under us. But with the stuff they have now, it's just unbelievable. It's a great time to be around. I wish I was in my 20s now because the amount of inventions and the amount of ingenuity that people are having when it comes to deer hunting... Now, if you're a prepper and you don't hunt, then you're a fool. It is a skill that takes time to learn. You know, like when you hunt rabbits, it's real easy when it's a cottontail and it's uh, in the first snow because all you're looking for is an eyeball, and that's what seems to stick out more. But you learn these tricks with experience as you get these, um, this skill with hunting. You know, rabbits will run in a circle. If you spook a rabbit, it'll run right back around right into you. And uh, a lot of people don't even know that. Squirrels, when you hunt them, you have to sit real still. I mean, you can put, put your back up against a tree, clean all the leaves out so you don't make no noise, and just kind of sit there. But if all of a sudden a blue jay shows up, and the blue jay starts squawking, and it's kind of funny how they're blue. Because how we have the police that are blue, right? So when the blue jay starts squawking, the squirrels go straight to the top and all the animals hide. It literally is the cops of the wilderness are blue jays. But there are a lot of things that trigger other animals to go into hiding or whatever or movement. I mean, all kinds of things. And actually, you don't even have to go out and shoot an animal. You could play a little, a little game, and you could go out and say, okay, how many squirrels am I going to see today? And then go out and see how many you'll see and how many you think that you could have shot or killed. Now, if all you could see was one, and that's what you're going to eat, you're going to get pretty skinny, pretty skinny pretty quick, right? And then the other thing is, could you sneak up on a deer? You know, could you sit behind a tree or... Could you sit on the ground and pay attention to the wind and literally see how close you can get? You don't have to hunt them. But you should teach yourself the skill on how to hunt them when you have to. You know, I think everybody should learn how to skin. And that's real easy to do. I mean, you can go to the Amish or any place and buy live rabbits, you know, even live chickens, 
and you could bring them home and you could skin them. You'd have to dispatch them. You would have to skin them and uh, teach yourself how to do that. Lots of YouTube videos. You know, you don't even got to hunt it. Just go out and buy one for 10 bucks, 20 bucks or whatever and teach yourself that skill so now you know how to do it. And of course, like anything, the more you do, the better you get. But this is called the slatter system. Put it up against a tree, climb up, pull it up between your legs, hook it up again, climb up, give it a little shake, it comes off at the bottom, pull it up, hook it on the tree, climb up, and just repeat the process on how high you want to go. Now, that's only one step. You know, this is one step in the process of climbing the tree. Then you have to move on to, do you want to sit in a tree stand? Do you want to sit in a tree saddle? Do you want to sit in a chair? You have to decide what you want next for your hunting is what you want to do. Now, I originally preferred tree stands. That's what I used last year. But I'm switching over to a hybrid saddle, which allows me to sit in the tree. And what I'm picturing is that because I can hide behind the tree and hide my body, it's going to give me a much better advantage, a much better advantage when it comes time to take the deer. And uh, I've been slowly putting that system together. Because every time I ordered, um, I'd get two pieces and then the other ones were out. And then a week later, they'd say, oh, we got these in stock. So then i go order a couple more pieces and the other pieces were out. It's been a fight to get it because all the hunters are scrambling and uh, buying everything they need for next month before hunting season opens. Now, this slatter system could have been a total waste of money. I don't know yet. I might be very nervous climbing in it. I might not feel safe. We're going to have to see. If that's the case, then I'm going to have to use um, my sticks. I do have two sets of different sticks, so I could go back to that. But... Um, some people love this system, some people hate this system. And the side I think they hate about it is feeling clumsy in it, is what I think. Now, I see a lot of this, this type of rope. I could make this. I see how it's done and how it's shoved in the center. This isn't very hard to duplicate, and it looks like they've got some type of... Uh, I don't know, rubber thing to heat it up and squeeze down on it. But I think I'm going to like it. I hummed and hawed before I bought it. And because it was under two pounds, that was the biggest thing I was looking at. Now, my hybrid saddle system weighs around 12 pounds. So you figure I'm at 14 with that. And then I've got some steps that are a pound. So I'd say I'm about 22 pounds is what's on my back when walking in. And then when I decide where I want to be, I could be up the tree fairly quick and uh, all set up and ready to go. Being light, and you got that balance again too because you might bring some snacks, I mean, stuff like that. But when I get out and use this and get it set up, I'll take a video of it. Right now it's just too hot. We're in the high 90s. Hopefully we get a cold spot here and I can get out there and show you some of this stuff. And I need to get some practice on it, too. I may end up having to go out in the heat and practice and just sweat like a pig, and that's all there is to it. But it's called the slatter system. And the video I got next door to me here that you're seeing is just showing you how it works and how you can actually apply it. But there's more than one way to use this, and it's not just hunting. It does have some great advantages if you just use your imagination. I'll catch you guys on the next one.